Take it away. We're back again with Kevin Gould. Guy's the man. I love Kevin. We're learning a lot. Man, he like, it's, it's amazing. He's telling me a story and we were talking about white marlin and uh, he said he went out one day and it was like early September last year and they're seeing some white marlin on top and all of a sudden that crazy yellowfin bite happened and he said he got 50 yellowfin on poppers that day. <laughs> Pretty crazy. <laughs> that just kind of makes me mad. I know, it makes me mad too. It's crazy. But for this one, so we really wanted to focus on white marlin. Um, I've never caught one. You've never caught one. No. I think we're going to try and do it this year. But he talks about, you know, pitch baits, what you should have ready if you see a white marlin come into the spread or if they're up top, like sunning themselves, trying to get them to eat because they're crazy finicky, I guess, which I didn't really know. Cool. Yeah, it was good. So. And that's a possibility for like close to shore in a smaller boat, right? Yeah, he said he got, like, he found white marlin. He said if you come out of Muskegon Channel in between the islands, like, be on the lookout for white marlin because they'll come all the way up that way. So, wow. yeah, they're like, they can be really close. Okay. It's about putting, like, hours into miles and, you know, eventually you'll see something. But, yeah, pretty cool. Cool. Let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, so our canyon season typically starts in late June, early July. At that time, the white marlin are going to be found alongside the tuna in that nice blue water when you find your first eddies coming off the Gulf Stream. As the summer goes on, they'll come inshore. They'll come in to areas like the rips off of Gay Head and uh, the Hooter Buoy. Um, traveling south between, you know, if you go south through uh, Muskegon Channel and continue on the west side of the Nantucket Shoals, you'll find white marlin. Um, they will associate with any offshore structure. You'll see them just free swimming a lot of the times. You'll see them, looks like two sticks in the water as they're swimming along. Um, when you do see them finning on the surface, people will throw live eels, live scup, or dead ballyhoo at them. I've had the most success with dead ballyhoo. You don't have to rig them to swim. Put a, cir a circle hook right through the belly or through the back, cast it at them, let it sink. If they spin on it and swim away, just keep driving. If they spin twice, they're gonna eat it every time. Um, trolling for white marlin, like the Wahoo, is usually an incidental catch for most people. Um, they love ballyhoo. They like small baits, light baits. Um, you'll hook them on Joe shoots and other weighted um, islanders, things like that, but they have an, a hard time, or it's pretty easy for them to throw a heavy lure, I should say. They're also incredibly difficult to hook on a J hook. They have a mouth like a bird beak. So really the only way to do it is with a circle hook. Most people will be using 6-aught, 7-aught, or 8-aught circle hooks, inline circle hooks. Um, the benefit of the circle hook is once you do get that hook planted in the corner of the mouth, you can put that reel right back in free spool and let him do his thing. If you have to clear the spread, maneuver the boat, you don't have to worry about him. He's not shaking that hook. Now, when I'm trolling a mixed spread, the long riggers will be islanders or something like the small lure company, any small chug and lure. Um, that will stay up top will attract white marlin. Um, they like pinks and whites. They like blues and whites. They like purple. Um, your number one color is probably going to be pink, though. Uh, pink and white islander is always a hot lure. Um, the most fun way to fish a white marlin is you'll troll squid chains on your bridge teasers. Bigger boats, a lot of people will pull dredges. Um, when the marlin come up on a teaser, you have a pitch rod ready to go either with a naked ballyhoo or we'll rig a little molecraft chugger in front of the ballyhoo. Again, on a circle hook, feed it back to them and let them eat. As soon as that fish turns, just creep the drag up slowly and game on. These light Talica 20s and 25s rigged with 25 or 30 pound mono make for a fun fight. It gets interesting when you hook a tuna. Uh, we did actually catch a 105 pound yellowfin on attack 25 on 25 pound mono this year during the OBBC. It can be done, but it takes up a lot of your time canyon fishing. The white marlin are a lot more popular in the mid-Atlantic region. You have the mid-Atlantic 500,000 and the white marlin open are two large tournaments in that area that are really white marlin centric. Um, most of the crews you see fishing those tournaments are gonna be fishing all circle hook rigs. So you'll fish teasers and circle hook rigs and you won't have a single J hook in the water. Now, when you're fishing all circle hooks, you have to be super attentive to your gear. So your tacks are all in free spool, clickers off, and you're standing there all day waiting to feel that little tap. You got your rods in your rocket launcher and your lines going out your outrigger. Now, most casual canyon fishermen aren't gonna dedicate four people to sit by a reel for 10 hours a day. So that's why 
a lot of the times we'll fish the islanders on the long riggers with jay hooks because the white marlin will come up and eat them and if you're not right there ready it's going to bird nest you every time so if you leave your reel in gear with a jay hook at least you stand a chance at catching them the other thing we like to do is on our flat line clips we'll wrap the mono in a coil put it in the flat line clip keep the reel in free spool that way when the fish comes up and grabs your ballyhoo he's going to pop that flat line clip and take off not feeling the resistance of the drag. You walk over, pick up the rod, point it at them, slowly increase the drag. The important thing to consider is that white marlin aren't found exclusively in the canyons, and you'll see them a lot of times when you're not targeting them. So if you're fishing the inshore grounds for the bluefin and yellowfin that we get around the 20 and 30 fathom line, it's a good idea to keep a lighter spinning rod set up, ready to go with the circle hook. So if you see one swimming while you're cruising north or south down to the fishing grounds, you can throw a bait on a circle hook quickly, go up and pitch to them on a lighter casting rod. This is a seven and a half foot Shimano grappler, nice light rod. It's fine for yellowfin, fine for bluefin, but it'll actually make for a fun fight with a small white marlin. You know, a big white marlin's 80 pounds. They'll run fast, they jump a lot, um, but they don't pull incredibly hard. And you know, you don't need super heavy tackle to catch them. So as far as artificials go for white marlin, it's very difficult to hook them on a treble hook. So if you throw a stick bait at a popper at them, they'll try and eat it, they'll chase it around. It's a good way to keep them occupied while you get a bait ready. The thing that you can, the lure that you can throw at them and actually hook them would be a soft plastic like a hoagie or a sluggo, typically rigged with a circle hook in the nose just like a ballyhoo. That way they'll come up, they'll feel something soft, but it'll go down the hatch and you can reel right in that circle hook right into the corner of the mouth. 